What's up everybody? This is Prepper Princess. I'm going to talk to you today about how I became the millionaire next door. So let's go ahead and get right into it. So I started working at the age of 10. I got a paper route at the age of 14. I became a bottle girl, which is a old term for a stalker, like a, a merchandise stalker at a liquor store. 16, I went to Target. 18, I went to Best Buy. And I kept working and working and working. So at the age of 18 years old, I immediately started maxing out my 401k at my job that had a company match. So that was just to get the match. I also maxed out my Roth IRA, which I believe at the time was maybe 5k a year. And I did not do this monthly. I've always saved up and put in a lump sum at the end of the year, which is not the best way to do it, but it seems to be the only way that I can do it without messing things up. So this is what I did, okay? And I've been doing this for ever, for since the age of 18. One thing that I wish that I would have known when I was younger is that you don't have to be 18 years old to invest. You can invest, these are only tax beneficial retirement things. So these are where you, you are benefited by taxes, but there's ways to do it without being benefited by taxes. This is where you hear about things like Robin Hood and E-Trade, Charles Schwab, Vanguard, Fidelity, all these different companies. So after several years, um, I started getting a better income, a higher income, and my expenses went low enough that I not only maxed these out, I also started putting a ton of money into non-tax beneficial retirement accounts. One of the things I do want to talk to you really briefly about is windfalls. That's when you get money that you were not expecting. So back in my early 20s, I worked for a bank called Washington Mutual. Not sure if you've ever heard of it, but I worked in the fraud department. And during the, I think it was, it was either 2001, I think it was 2001 financial crash or maybe it was 2008, I'm sorry, you know, I'm 39 years old and I can't remember 20 years ago exactly what the dates are, but Washington Mutual was bought out by Chase Bank via the FDIC. They mandated Washington Mutual to sell themselves. So uh, Washington Mutual told us a year ahead of time, a full year, that we were going to lose our jobs. They called in the entire company. They said, in one year, you have one year from today's date and you are going to be let go. So this gave everybody the opportunity to search for a new job. But if you stayed with the company, what they did is they paid you your you know, hourly wage. I don't know, I don't remember what I made, 15 an hour. Maybe it was 12 an hour, maybe it was 11. I think it was like 12.50, I don't know. But say they, that you got paid 15 bucks an hour. So you would work for that entire year making your normal salary at 15 bucks an hour. Then after your last day of work, they would send you a check for the entire year that you worked. So you make 40 grand a year. They sent you a check at the end. You got paid normally. And then at the very end, they sent you a check for $40,000. <laughs> it was taxed as a bonus. So it's like minus 40%. But... I did receive a check for $23,000. This was a huge thing. Now, I don't remember exactly. I think I was, this was one of my jobs where I was becoming debt free. So I worked uh, two jobs from 6 a.m. until midnight for a full year and a half, six days a week. And then on my seventh day, I would work at labor ready in order to get extra money if I couldn't get a shift. So this $23,000 did not go towards debt. I don't remember if I was debt free at that point. That went straight into my retirement accounts. So let's move on to another windfall. Um, I inherited uh, a house when my mother passed away in the Bay Area of California. Now I am very open and honest about this. So the house, when, when she passed away, it was done under a living will and trust, which means that Yes, I inherit the house, but I also inherit all of her debt. The house was not paid off. So she owed about $45,000 on the house, but by the time she passed away when I was 28, I was already saving up for my own house and I had $45,000. So I paid off the house. 
Also, the property taxes were about $4,000 per year. I stayed there for 10 years, so $40,000 in property taxes, $45,000 towards paying off the house, and an additional eighty dollars to $100,000 fixing it up. New roof, new gutters, new landscaping, new flooring, new walls, new paint, new, new plumbing, new bathrooms. Everything had to be updated. I also had to spend about $8,000 hauling off all of her stuff because, well, unfortunately, when she passed away, she was a hoarder. So I invested a whole lot into this property. Fast forward several years later, uh, my brother decides that he wants to sell it because he also inherited the home. <clears throat> and my aunt had a 20% stake in it. So we sold the house for 732. My aunt got 20%. The remaining 80% was divided between my brother and I. My portion was 292,000 minus the 150 or so that I put into the house. So I made about $140,000. Now you would think what most people would do is take this $140,000 and buy another house. Well, I already had all of my all of my retirement was maxed out at this point and I just had extra money sitting around because I live a frugal lifestyle, so I bought this house for $67,000 at the very bottom of the market it has now doubled in price about a year and a half later um, and the money that i got from the inheritance of the house just went into retirement uh, so i haven't actually touched any of the money from the house other than putting it into my retirement and it has grown exponentially since that point so i do want to talk again about different types of windfalls now this is very important every year around tax time now in my adult life, I have never gotten a tax refund. I always owe anywhere between five and $8,000 per year. Even though I claim zero dependents, I am debt free, so I do not have any tax deductions. Um, I did find a new tax guy. He was able to find a few tax deductions, but nothing like a mortgage payment or student loans or you know cars or anything that most people can use as a tax deduction i don't have that option and i also do not have children because i could not afford them however every year around tax time i always hear all of my coworkers telling me about how they got an eight thousand dollar check a six thousand dollar check a thirteen thousand dollar check and every time i ask them what they're going to do with this windfall this unexpected money they spend it they don't put it into their retirement they don't put it into assets they put it into liabilities they're like me i'm taking my son my boyfriend and his four kids to disneyland and it's like i thought you said you owed eighteen thousand dollars on your suv yeah i'll do that later but right now we're going to disneyland and we're going to remodel our living room and buy new furniture so when most people get a windfall they spend it um i save it or in it, I invest it, which is one of the most important things that you can do. And these are my two biggest uh, windfalls um, were this. And this is what started it all because this happened. Remember the 23,000 during the 2008 financial crash when the market was at its absolute lowest. I can't even calculate what that is worth right now. But I put that whole 23,000 in and I had already been investing for seven, eight, nine years at that point. I was born in 1981, by the way, I am 39 years old. I became financially independent and able to retire at the age of 38. I tried retiring at the age of 38 and I almost went insane. So I am now back to work. Uh, that's just the way it is. Uh, <laughs> I actually enjoy my job. It's a little bit different when you have the money is that you actually enjoy what you do. Uh, I, and I get a lot of people asking what I do. I work with the public. I do not wish to tell anyone where I work. A couple of my subscribers have run into me at my job, so I am very easy to get a hold of. And as you know, there are a lot of crazy people on YouTube, people who stalk me, who dox me, who show my address, uh, who have come to my house. So I do not want people showing up at my work. So I choose not to say what I do and I choose not to say where I work, but I work, yes. Now, with my current job, now remember folks, I am debt free, financially independent, and I'm gonna be honest with you, I'm at the point in my life, I have almost no expenses, I have no, you know, no student loans, no car loan, no house mortgage, no, I have no debt. I pay off my credit card monthly and I just use that for transactions like water, garbage, sewer, um, 
electric, electric, and I just live my life. Now, a lot of people talk about, you know, not being able to do it. That's a horrible life to live. Well, let me start by saying that a lot of people make a lot of small transactions to get their mind off things, to get away from it all. And when people go on vacation, they go on vacation to get away from it all. Well, I have set up my life in such a way that I have nothing to get away from because there's nothing to get away from. I enjoy my life. I love my life. I get to spend time with my best buddy, Rocky. I get to go play uh, in the river. I get to go for walks. I get to do what I really enjoy doing. And a lot of people are like, well, what about traveling the world? Been there, done that. Costa Rica, Nicaragua, Guatemala, Africa, uh, you name it, I have been there. Well, not you name it, I've been there. I've been to every place I've ever wanted to visit with the exception of Australia and maybe Sweden or, or something like that. But uh, I have traveled the world, you know, and people don't, they think that because I'm so frugal, I haven't seen anything. Um, they also assume that I don't treat myself. Now, I do want to say that every year I will go on vacation. When I go on vacation, I make it rain, <laughs> okay? I do not budget anything for vacation. I spend what I spend, and that's what it is. There is dust flying in my nose. I spend what I spend, and then I just pay it off when I get home because I have a large savings account. I do have a fully funded emergency fund, uh, which is a full years of expenses. Most people stop at three to six months, but I am not comfortable with that. So I have one year of spending in cash, okay? So I follow the Dave Ramsey method, live and give like no one else, and that is how I live my life. Recently, we had, I just got a stimulus payment that I had no clue was a thing. Like, not only did I know, not know I was getting one, I didn't know that anyone was getting one. So I just got a check for 1800 bucks. Do you know what I did with that 1800 bucks? I donated it to the Animal Rescue Foundation, the entire thing, because why? I don't need it. <laughs> I'm financially independent, I'm happy, I'm good. So that's how I did it, folks. It is a really simple formula, but not a lot of people are able to follow it. I highly suggest if you have a Starbucks habit and you're spending six, seven dollars on a Frappuccino, learn to make it yourself for 27 cents per Frappuccino. And you can even get a pretend Starbucks cup that has the Starbucks logo on it and then you can make your friends believe that you're still drinking your Starbucks, even though mine is just as good, if not better. And what I did also, I forgot to mention, is while doing this for the last 15, 20 years, uh, I lived on almost nothing. Um, and I wrote a book, Living on Almost Nothing. I will leave a link in the description. So I got rid of my cable and I got a Roku box. I'll leave the description for that also. And for those of you who have an antenna, I really hope that you enjoy uh, riding your horse and buggy to work, but you really need to upgrade to a Roku as long as you have internet service. I downgraded my internet service from 74 a month to 37.99 a month. I um, changed my cell phone plan. It, I didn't even change my cell phone plan. It actually improved. I used to have AT&T for 74 a month. I now have Mint Mobile for only 15 a month and I have unlimited everything, and instead of getting two gigs with AT&T for 74 a month, I get four gigs with Mint for 15 a month. I'll leave the link for the Mint Mobile in the description also. I switched my car insurance from everything to liability. Um, I use my electricity sparingly. I do my laundry via a small washing machine and I do it via solar with water that I catch in a bucket in my shower. It's water that would otherwise just go down the drain and be put right back into the system. But why do that if I can do it myself? I hang dry my clothes. Um, I ride my bike or walk whenever possible. In fact, every time I go grocery shopping, I ride my bike and I will have a review for you guys soon on an e-bike. I just got confirmation from the company that they are going to be sending it to me and I really do believe that this is the way of the future and it is especially the way of the future for us frugal folks out there. So frugality is not a disease even though it sounds like one. You can become financially independent. 
you can make a living off of your money if you just don't spend it. All right, folks, I hope this video has been helpful. Do what you can. No, not do what you can. Um, if you believe that you can do it or you believe that you can't do it, you are right. Prepper Princess out. Take me as far as you can and then I'll do it on my own.